As the sun rises this morning over the Atlantic Ocean, not only do we see Major Hurricane Sam, but newly formed Tropical Storm Victor. We've got all the updated info on the strength and paths of these two storms. And speaking of the sun, a very good YouTuber by the name of Suspicious Observers gave us a very good explanation about a CME situation that is approaching Earth as we speak. Impact will be October 1st. In fact, growing concern about this CME you just saw on your screen. Many people claiming that the pressure from a very strong geostorm at this time, especially in the area near La Palma, could cause extra activity on top of the stuff we already know about as far as power outages, internet outages, and things of that nature. We are already seeing seismic activity as far as earthquakes today on La Palma, aside from the pressure releases in the volcanoes themselves. A lot to unpack in the Atlantic as a whole, and we're going to do it right now. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. September 30th, 2021, 9.49 a.m. We are almost in October. Unreal. We are going to go a little rapid fire today. First, we're going to go over the storms in the Atlantic Ocean, and we can officially say we have one name remaining on the original 21 names of the 2021 Atlantic hurricane season. Of course, one of those big boys being Major Hurricane Sam. Still a major hurricane. Take a look at that pressure. 9.37 millibars as of now. We'll have an update around 11 a.m. from the National Hurricane Center. And taking a look at the timeline through Saturday, we could see this thing continuing to stay above a Category 3 at 111 miles an hour. That is that major hurricane target number. And then you see only after passing Bermuda and whipping back out to the Atlantic do we see it die down to a hurricane, according to now, which would be around early Sunday morning. All major models are keeping Sam not only off the U.S. coast, but now those parts of Canada we've been talking about may be in much better shape than previously thought. The wave situation and rip currents will still be a major issue along the entire eastern sea board for the U.S. and Canada, but now we got to start looking at another storm in Victor, which has a little bit more of a confusing path as far as an active gulf. Remember, this time of year, we are going to start seeing storms near Central America or the Caribbean once again. How do we know that, do you say? Well, we know for a few reasons. One being that it is actually what happens every season as far as the atmospheric conditions, the chances of our hurricane, specifically in the month of October, which you could see where my cursor is now. This deep orange color is where most of our storms storms are known to form this time of year. Obviously, when you look at September, it makes perfect sense as to why we've been seeing storms like Larry and Sam and all these eastern coast storms that come from the west coast of Africa. It's the change in the atmosphere conditions from September to October, and we could see it clear as day right in front of us. Here is a quick look at the updated timeline of Victor as of now. This will change, but just to give you an idea, it is expected to reach hurricane status, but as of now, a fish storm, something that will kind of sit out in the middle of the Atlantic. That doesn't mean it's going to be out of our hair. It just means for the time being, we probably don't have to worry about Victor. Before I jump into the Sun, the CME, and La Palma, I want to show you the NavGem version of the Atlantic Ocean Hurricane Season model. And the reason I want to show you is because it actually brings us the closest approach as of now to that part of Canada, Newfoundland. So I just want to give you what the worst case scenario could be as of right now for those of you that live up in this area, the Northeast and Maine, and this most Eastern part of Canada. A lot of people asking about what are the different outcomes of this storm. And as of now, the NavGem is what puts it the closest we could see Victor down here and for example if we compare it to the GFS we could see the storm broadens out the wind field gets a lot bigger but believe it or not it's actually a little farther off the coast this does look a little more messy and rough for this area of Newfoundland but as we click forward we could see that windstorm expand and then it moves and breaks up fairly quickly as it moves up towards the northern Atlantic very big system all right, my friends, now I want to talk about that. What you just saw on the bottom right of your screen, I'll go ahead and play it once again. This was a CME that came off the sun, the bottom right quadrant of the sun, and it was partially Earth-facing. And what that means, as explained in very good detail by a YouTuber called Suspicious Observers, I highly recommend his channel. Very, very informative. He will break this down much better than I ever could. Long story short, we have different explosions on the sun, and we just had one around September 29th going into the 30th. You see right here it was a class c flare which is fairly strong we have had m's and x's in the past but the fact that it was earth facing and in a very simple nutshell what this is is an explosion off the sun that sends geomagnetic storm particles or a solar storm towards the earth for those of you that don't know some of these speeds can reach upwards of 1 million miles per hour or even 500 to 700 kilometers per second and when you take all that information and put it together it makes a lot more sense as to the pressure caused by that storm 
storm and the constant solar particles hitting Earth, how they can affect seismic activity and or volcanic activity on Earth. Now, we're not going to see anything here on the GFS, but if we jump over to Volcano Discovery, they are monitoring seismic activity on this island, and we're already seeing, as early as 17 hours ago, a 3.3, another 3.3, and a 2.8. Many people and channels are suggesting that the pressure from the solar wind, which we are now starting to receive between now and October 1st, will probably be the bulk of it. It can start affecting weaker parts of the tectonic plates or places or parts of those plates that need releases. We don't know which of those will happen or if it will happen at all, but it's known to take place and there's plenty of evidence suggesting that very strong solar wind and things like that can put ample pressure on the Earth. You are also looking at a global real-time ionosphere chart where we have the very max of it sitting right near India right now, moving towards that eastern coast of Africa. And soon enough, this area of energy is going to be right over La Palma. So I'll let you guys do the math on that one. Before I get too far ahead of myself, here is Suspicious Observer's channel, a daily poster on space weather, incredible YouTuber, very, very smart person. I've talked about him many times here on this channel. And also, as far as the La Palma volcano, this channel right here, Bushcraft Bear, is amazing. This man happens to live, or at least is on the island right now, where this volcanic eruption is taking place. And it does not take a brain surgeon to see that his videos are very, very popular when it comes to being boots on the ground for La Palma. I think he goes up on this mountain twice a day to post. I want to be very clear. I'm not saying in any way that we're going to have some sort of major eruption, earthquake, or a bunch of hurricanes flare out due to a solar flare from the sun. But what I am saying is that based on research and experience, things I've actually seen that many people have seen, the sun and solar particles and solar wind hitting Earth absolutely 100% can affect and cause seismic activity and volcanic activity on Earth. So to say that this CME impacting Earth is a non-threat would be a lie. I don't know exactly what it would do, but there's a lot of talk going on about it, so I wanted to bring it to your attention and give you some sources to get a little bit more information or at least better described information than I can provide you. My friends, I want to thank you all for taking the time to watch this video. I'm going on a trip for a few days. I'm leaving tomorrow through Monday, so I will be posting on the channel through, through my phone and things like that, but I just wanted to put that out there in case I'm not posting on the normal schedule like we usually do, but I will be keeping you updated on Sam and Victor and this CME situation one way or another, and that is the information I have for you for today. Shout out to Canada. I hope you guys are having a great start to your day and the rest of your day goes well. I'll be in touch. Talk to y'all very soon. Bye-bye. Stop right there, my friends. If you have not already, click that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell icon. Click all and you will get all notifications from this channel. And trust me, you won't be disappointed.